Welcome back to my channel, guys. I'm Nina, this is The Red Elevator, and today we are finally going to be answering all of your design dilemmas. We asked on Instagram what your design dilemmas were so that I can answer them for you. So if you are one of the ones who submitted your design dilemma, this is your episode. Follow me. If you missed the Instagram story and have a design dilemma, well, there's an email in the description section for you to submit your design dilemma that we will address in a future episode. Our very first question comes from Muna. Muna says, I am moving into a new home in two months. I already have some furniture at my current home. I'm a bit confused about how to place it in my new home. Can I put a console table by the main living room wall? Is it okay to hang big mirrors on each side of the console table? And can I put chairs in front of each mirror? Let's take a look at Muna's furniture pieces that she has in her current home. These are the pieces that she submitted and these are her mirrors. And let's talk about the placement of these pieces. This, from my understanding, is not her new home. These are her pieces that are in her existing home. So how should these be repurposed in her new home? And I would say that you've got very ornate and beautiful pieces and you want to make sure that you don't over mirror so i see a mirror in the front i see a diff i see a secondary mirror and i see another third mirror so my rule in interior design is if you love something don't repeat it but have a moment of it because it'll be much more powerful so if you're going to put the console table with a mirror above it which i like I would say that your mirror needs to be smaller than your console table. If you're gonna use the red lacquered table, then you cannot use the oversized gold mirror on top of it because you need your table to be larger than the mirror. However, you could put your console table with something smaller above, not a mirror, maybe art, maybe something sculptural. And then on the opposite side, you could absolutely have your Trumeau mirror, this very large wall leaning mirror, and then add uh, a chair in front of it. Why not? I love a chair in front of a mirror at an angle. I think that's very, very chic, but be very mindful of not overdoing it. Thank you, Muna, for submitting. All right, our next question comes from Julia. Now make sure you stick to the very end because a lot of these questions will absolutely pertain to your own design dilemma and I think we could have all of us a great takeaway from this session. But let's see what Julia asks. So Julia says about a year ago, she had the pleasure and I quote, which I love, I had the pleasure of speaking with Nina during one of our consultations where she advised me on the layout of my living room. So Julia, welcome back. I'm so excited to see what your question is. And following a recommendation, I added a curved sofa and a camel chair for a pop of color, both of which really enhance the space. And then she writes, I recently saw her post on Instagram inviting followers to submit pictures of their living rooms for a potential feature on her YouTube, which is exactly what I asked. And I'm excited to participate and would love to hear her suggestions on how to further improve my space. Specifically, she asked, there's a large empty wall next to a mirror that I'd appreciate some advice on. Let's take a look at Julia's space. Okay, so Julia has a very chic, very clean, um, beautiful apartment. I don't know in what city, but it looks like we're in a cosmopolitan city. I do remember telling her to put the curved sofa because we wanted to give a more expansive feel to the space. So when you have more of a um, rectangle apartment, you don't want to be so obvious and put a rectangular sofa and really lose the ability to make your space feel larger. So the curved sofa really um, helped anchor um, a larger space, Julia. So I'm really glad you did that. And I love the single chair because it has a uh, weight and it has substance and it looks great. So her main dilemma, and I love, by the way, the standing floor lamp. All right, so let's get to the question at hand. So what to do with that large wall? First and foremost, I would move the lamp to the other side of the sofa if you want to leave your mirror in its current location because that's going to give you 
more definition of the wall behind you. So that's one option. That will allow you to see more of a triangle. So you'll have your sofa, you'll have a left leaning standing lamp, and then you're gonna have your mirror. Now, another option, because I'd like to give several, the, the issue at hand is that there is too much negative space between the standing lamp and the mirror. They feel almost disconnected. So you must move your mirror in further to the left. So that part of it is somehow behind that sofa. And when you do that, and you need to move your lamp a little bit more to the right. So then you're going to have a convergence of these two items, and you're going to see a tremendous difference and change into the room. And where you have your mirror, now this is, instead of buying new items, I don't think you need to buy additional items. This is me working with what you have to give you a quick solution. So I would bring the mirror closer to the sofa. I would bring the floor mirror a little bit uh, closer to the mirror. And then I would put in the space where you have a mirror, a large plant. And that's going to really give you the triangular, the visual that you are looking for. I think that's going to make a huge difference. Also, I've noticed that you have a lot of white space on your carpet. I would throw in one or two little poofs. I would almost venture to say that a quarter of your sofa is going to be behind the mirror. That's how much you're gonna lean it in and you're going to keep it within the space where the rug exists. Your mirror right now is outside of the rug. I want the mirror to be inside of the rug. So nothing should fall outside of the rug with regard to the mirror. You're gonna put a plant and I suggest buying two poofs. Two poofs with a little bit of color to bring some fun into the scenario. We'll link a couple that we think will look great. You could do camels, caramels, olives, rusts, anything that is earthy in color. Laura. Laura, thank you for submitting your question. You wrote, we are currently in the process of redesigning our villa and I am reaching out to seek your expertise regarding a particular challenge we are facing. We are struggling with achieving symmetry in a key area of the living room. Specifically, the TV wall is situated directly between a large window and the entrance door, which makes it challenging to create a balanced and cohesive look. So Laura, let's look at your space. So this is Laura's uh, beautiful space. She has obviously a lot of room. This is a very clean, very modern home with um, a clean soffit. And we are um, trying to place a television basically where the chair is. And I'm gonna look at this picture closely. So where the two chairs are is where Laura would like to place her television. And she's having difficulty with symmetry. First and foremost, my first gut reaction is I wish I could see the rest of the space because to me, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put the television by the front door. Now, I could be wrong because I, maybe everything else is glass and there's no other place to put it, but I have to um, advise on doing something like that. If there is another wall in that space where you could put your television, it would be a lot better. It just seems counterintuitive to be sitting facing the front door and watching television at the same time, unless there is really no other space. To me, that needs to be an entrance, that needs to be a foyer, and you can definitely carve out another niche for your TV. So I would definitely recommend against putting a TV there. What I would recommend, if you have to absolutely place a TV on that wall and you don't have a choice, then what I would do is try and make it look like art. Art in, on that wall would actually be recommended. If I were designing your space, I would say that wall could use art. So in that case, why don't you cut out a very if you get the very flat LG televisions that have basically zero protrusion or you can create a niche behind your wall, you can flatten it out and make your television look like art. And in that case, there is no bother when it comes to symmetry. It'll just look like a beautiful piece of art on your wall. Hope that helps. The next question comes from Niha. Niha writes, why doesn't my space look as elevated as I want it to look? with a wood and ivory theme. How can I get more of a designer look? So let's look at Niha's space and let's figure out why it doesn't look like 
cover ready, you know, like one of the architectural magazines. Because if you look at her room, she has very nice, very well made items. This is a beautiful room. Most of us would be lucky to have a room this size. Her drapes are beautiful. I love how she's taken them all the way to the soffit and her nightstands are great. First thing I would do, I would move the nightstands a little bit further away from the bed. I feel like they're just colliding and they really don't need to be that close. Visually, they will look better if you move them slightly to the right. I like how your lamps are you know, centered with the table. But let me tell you what I would do if uh, I had this dilemma. First and foremost, there is a little bit too much simplicity in this room. So in order to elevate it, you need to also bring something with some character, something with some asymmetry, something with visual interest, which is lacking. You have the perfect base, but bring in a bench, I would say, that is very architectural. Maybe it's a wood sculptural piece. You have to deep, deep dive and find it. Uh, maybe the base is a triangle of this wood table. I'm just imagining, or maybe it's in a beautiful shape or the feet are bun feet, big ball feet, something fun, something playful, something very artsy. That will really elevate the front of the room. So I would definitely do that. Furthermore, I would bring in lamps that are a lot more designer, in terms of uh, not price, but in terms of aesthetic. Something that's a little bit more bold. Everything is a little bit too safe. And I understand that we get scared to push the envelope, but you guys have to remember that you have to push the visual envelope in order to grow. You can't play it safe. You've played it very, very safe all along here. It's beautifully done, but if you want the designer look, get lamps that are either vintage, maybe they're lacquered in brass, um, go on to eBay, type in a uh, mid-century lamp, or look on you know, all the different websites that can give you something that's a lot more artistic. That will also elevate the room. Furthermore, I would say your walls are very, very white. And we've talked about this on our channel. Maybe it's just not photographing correctly, but I would do a warmer color, uh, especially because it looks like a very, very, very white color. And I would also take that color all the way through from your ceiling to your soffit to your walls and perhaps pick a color with a little more depth to it especially because it's the bedroom i don't think there is any reason why you can't do that and it could be a cream it doesn't have to be you know an actual color because i know you are very minimal and i would lastly recommend perhaps if you can and if it's within budget changing your rug I love everything you've done with the room, but the rug is, although I can see it's a, it's a very beautiful rug, if you can use a rug in a different space, I would bring in a rug with a pattern. Not a bold, not a crazy pattern, but something, something that's going to give your room life. And if you do nothing at all, if you can only do one thing, change your rug out. Bring in a rug with a beautiful movement to it. You know, I have a, a rug collection at Ruggable, uh, you can do one of my rugs. Uh, I think the Loire would look great here. Um, also the Seine would look great here, or at least look at those rugs on my Ruggable site so that you can get an idea of what type of rug I'm talking about when I'm talking about the Loire and the Seine and um, find something similar if you want to get uh, something in that vein and you will see a huge difference. I hope that helps. For those of you who have not subscribed, 70 of you percent watch this channel without subscribing. And my feelings are legitimately hurt. I'm only kidding. If you can subscribe, I would be very appreciative. So take the moment, take the second and click that subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell if you're interested in finding out about our weekly vlogs because our vlogs have taken off you guys. Uh, our last vlog is doing better than any other or as well as our top, top episode. So I'm really glad you guys are enjoying it and I love making them for you. So make sure and bring that bell. Now, our next question is from Tanya. Tanya asks, I'm a huge fan of Nina. Thank you, Tanya. And uh, who's changed my perception of design in the time I've discovered her this year. Tanya, that those kinds of uh, comments and messages that come in really fuel my, um, my life. They do because I know that I am changing and transforming as little as it is 
people's lives and people's homes and it just it gives me my purpose and it makes me so happy so thank you for sharing that and she writes i'm renovating a lovely stone cottage in france a lovely stone cottage in france hello i'm jealous can i can i come for a visit nothing better a lovely stone cottage in france it's deep countryside how beautiful but i want to combine old traditional and fresh new this is my this is my combination like tanya you and i are the same person all right my kitchen however is tricky because of the layout two doors all kitchens by the way in france are tricky for some reason the french have not figured out the kitchen layout um, it's getting better as time goes on. They have everything mastered from food to design to furniture. But when it comes to the kitchen, it, there's a complete disconnect. Anyhow, my kitchen, however, is tricky because of the layout. Two doors, corner fireplace. Fireplace in the kitchen is already a major bonus. Window. Where's the symmetry going to come from? Where exactly? We are all having problems with symmetry. What can I do to make it Nina Takish? All right, let's take a look. First of all, I am obsessed with this cottage and I wish I was there to help you renovate. I mean, I can't even think of anything more fun. The views I can tell are spectacular. So you're gonna have a great life in this cottage. I'm so happy for you, Tanya. And I am, um, and these are my recommendations. Right off the bat, it was very clear to me when I saw your space that what you need are sauce doors. Now in France, sauce doors are actually very um, ubiquitous. So I know you're not gonna have a problem finding and sourcing sauce doors. So essentially what it is, and maybe you can repurpose your doors. Uh, I, I don't know, hopefully you have, you have um, someone that you can go to in France that's going to advise you on the hardware. But essentially sauce doors, and we're gonna pop in some images into this YouTube, are doors that are clandestine. So they look like they are the wall, but in fact they're doors. And you put paneling on them. So let's say you have lower panels. I would add definitely paneling to the lower portion of your kitchen. It's just gonna make it more beautiful and it will clandestine those doors even further. And what will happen is you're going to paint your wall and your doors and your panels and your baseboards and anything else in that kitchen in the same color. So those doors will um, practically disappear and you will only see an outline of the door like the photos that we are putting in here. Then to open them, you do not have to have hardware. There is very minimal hardware that you can use in order to open and close those doors. And what will happen is that your kitchen will feel a lot more cohesive and you have plenty of room to float a beautiful breakfast table in there and create the kitchen of your dreams. My next suggestion to make it very Nina Takish would be to create what is a no kitchen kitchen because already this looks like a living room to me rather than a kitchen, which is lovely. I couldn't ask for more. I would do lower cabinets that stretch from the door on the right all the way around to the, where the window is and keep them cohesive, keep them all looking like a credenza, a cabinet rather than um, what is in there now, which I know you probably wouldn't want. I would put in something that looks more like furniture rather than what is now. And then I would float a sink and a cooktop and all of those things in a way that is minimal. And don't add any upper cabinets. You don't need that. Change out your chandelier for something a little bit more interesting and then float a table in the middle of the room. So this almost looks like a dining room with credenzas in it, but it's a really useful space where you can cook, you can put refrigeration. Now, if you can get panel ready refrigerator, I know in France, you don't need big refrigeration. You could maybe get a little, a little one that will fit under your cabinet. I just don't know, you know what your lifestyle is, how big the house is and what you need, but try and get panel ready items so that you just panel everything and give it the no kitchen kitchen look. By the way, if you guys have these kinds of design dilemmas and you need my help, well, I am just a phone call away by clicking the link in the description section and we can have a meeting as short as 25 minutes or as long as you need. Our next question, and it's our last one, right? Yeah. Our last question comes from Irene and this is probably one that the majority of you or a 
great deal number of you have issue with. So I'm glad that Irene sent in her question. I thoroughly enjoy watching your videos and your posts for the last couple of years. I have learned so much from what you teach. Thank you, Irene. That really means a great deal. And what you share. Your style and decor and fashion is inspirational. I am currently um, completely stumped with what to do with my dated bathroom. A lot of us have moved into homes with dated bathrooms or live in homes with dated bathrooms and don't have the budget to demo. And so this is Irene's dilemma. It's 20 years old and my husband won't allow a total gut and my husband won't allow a total gut job. That's also very normal. And I can change out the faucets and light fixtures, but I cannot take out any of the tile. As you can see, I have your rug. Thank you, Irene. You have our number one selling rug, by the way, in your bathroom. I love it. It's in my formal, um, I should say, in my primary bedroom where I sleep. It's the UD. We will link that for you guys to see. It really is a beautiful one. And I love how you actually wrote in that you're hiding the inset pieces on the floor with the rug. And that is exactly one of my, would have been one of my recommendations. So you are on the right track. I know Travertine is having a moment. It is. And, but the floor is really giving me a hard time and those fixtures are dated. Do you have any ideas that can help me update this bathroom? I really need your help, thank you. All right, so yes, I have some good ideas for you, Irene, and I hope you're watching um, so that you can actually get a, a lot of um, information and I hope it's useful for a lot of you because we see this time and time again all across America bathrooms that are perfectly functional so you can't really justify demoing them because there's no issue and but you just want it to look better you want it to look more you and so what i would do with this bathroom in fact i think you are working with um, an 80s bathroom that maybe 90s that is um we can transform in a way on budget that is not going to really um, hurt the bank so hurt the pocketbook. This is what I would do. I would, first of all, absolutely change all of the fixtures. That is going to give you an immediate sense of update. And I would choose a satin brass or an unlacquered brass. If you don't like a living finish, don't get unlacquered brass because unlacquered brass turns different shades of brass. I love it. It gives it a patina, but some people can handle it, in which case you're going to get what looks like an aged brass that doesn't move. Once you do that, already your bathroom's gonna look 10 times better. But then the large mirror from end to end is also what is dating your space. And one trick that I have used um, in several homes is instead of demoing that mirror, because in fact, it's kind of nice to have a large mirror where you can see yourself, but it doesn't look courant or au courant. It doesn't look you know, of the times. So what we've done is that we've purchased two asymmetrical mirrors, maybe with a very uh, thin, uh, slim brass uh, frame, and we have um, attached it to the mirror. So find someone that knows how to do that. You wanna make sure it doesn't fall off, but that automatically will elevate that wall with very little investment because the mirrors are not very expensive. You can find them online and uh, you just have to find someone that knows how to attach them above each sink. They shouldn't be, you know, huge. They should be somewhere in the, you know, uh, 40 to 25 range, 40 to 50 in height, depending on what is happening in your bathroom. And the width should be somewhere between 20 and 30. So something that is in scale, you will put that above and you will um, attach it to your mirror and immediately change out your sconces. You need something that has warmth, that they, first of all, they are too high. Their location is too high. So without changing your outlets, because you don't have to, I'm trying to find your photo, without changing your outlets, you can buy fixtures that are fall down versus those that go up. So you need to look at the spec sheet of the light that you are buying. You need to find the round junction box and you need to make sure that the junction box is on top and that the fixture falls down. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll pop in a little instructional here of how to read that. And if you get a light fixture that has warmth, maybe there's wood in this fixture. Fixture. I'm seeing some wood in there. I'm seeing maybe uh, a little bit of alabaster, maybe definitely some brass in this um, light fixture. And that will also really update your space. Lastly, I can't tell what the color of your cabinets are or whether they're in good condition, but a nice coat of fresh paint that matches back to your walls 
would be a great idea. Lastly, for those of you asking, I'm gonna quickly um, link my outfit below in the description section because I always get comments as to what I'm wearing. My top is Reformation, my pants are Citizens, but we will link exactly those items below.